Alright, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite, and welcome back to Harvest December. This is the wolf. Sane! Yumi screamed. I stumbled in the snow. Kohai and the others stopped a few paces before me. We all wanted to scream, although we couldn't. If we screamed, it meant that we understood the horror of it all. Oh. Instead, we looked up in a daze. The light from the shop below gave us a clear view. Behind, the shop behind gave us a clear view. It gave us a clear view of something we didn't want to see. A thin shadow covered our faces. When the wolf shook his head sideways, Sine's body flopped like a rag doll. Humans have a way of bending time. Even a split second could feel like an eternity, something to be relieved and rethought for years to come. And during what felt like a slow, surreal stretch of time, we all heard Sine's leg break. Ouch. It sounded like paper tearing. At the same time, it sounded wet. The sound of destruction. Her body jiggled and flopped as the wolf tried to tear her leg apart. Knees weren't meant to bend in that direction. I could hear the wolf growling from between his fangs. It was complaining, frustrated that it couldn't take her apart to smaller pieces, smaller pieces he could eat. So it shook its head and flung her about. Once, twice, she was thrown down onto the ground. Her leg was barely connected. Ow! Time began to flow again. Time began to flow again. Finally, we had returned to reality. Mayori screamed. She sank to the ground, losing control of her legs. Let go of her! Kohai yelled as she ran past Miyori towards the wolf. Ko! Miyori stretched out her hand to cling to him, but she never reached him. Kohai lifted the knife that he had taken from the kitchen, ready to attack. It glinted, reflecting the light from behind. But the wolf ignored him, and instead bent its head towards Sine's leg to finish off the job. Stop this! The wolf was loyal to its master. It lay low and slowly paced away from Sine. Leave! Now! It did as it was told. In a flash, it was gone. We were all left standing in the snow and numbly, and Sine lay there motionless in a pool of blood. Why? Kohai asked Jiro. I... Why did you do that to Sine? I could hear Kohai breathing hard. He didn't look angry. He kept a blank face. But he had turned frightening, frighteningly pale, and the control he exerted to suppress his feelings caused Jiro to back away. He needed a reason to so he could keep himself sane. He didn't need to forgive her. He could be, he her reason could be selfish, it could be revenge, it could be anything. He just needed a reason to understand why. I made a mistake. But Shiro's reason completely crushed him. I the wolf I think it wanted to kill a Yuki, but it made it a mistake. So it attacked Sine instead. Kohai took a step forward. But that was as close as he could get. Hit Shiro spun around, facing away. A wolf appeared from the snow as and it, and she clung to it as she ran away. We could only watch her leave getting smaller and smaller as she vanished into the distance. Kohai knelt behind, beside Sine's body. Wake up, Sine. He patted her cheek. You'll catch a cold if you keep lying there. I think that's the least of her problems right now, just saying. You look sturdy, but you're the one that keeps getting sick. Come on. He tried to shake her shoulders, but a hand stopped him. Help me carry her. Dr. Monaco was, pra was practical. Her calm actions helped everybody regain their senses. It's my fault. We have no time. Hurry. I took so much time making my mind up and Sine... Sine! I should have made my decision sooner. Acted faster. It's my fault. Kohai was knocked down to the ground. I said, help me carry her. Dr. Monaka had lifted her leg into the air from kicking his face. Alright. She was right. We had no time. Do something. Yeah, really. My daughter is dying. Hurry up. The snow is no excuse. I can imagine what kind of a conversation was going on at the phone. She's losing too much blood. You have to hurry or... Give that to me. Yuki took the receiver away and gently from Yumi's hands. It's me. Spare no expenses to get the job done. Tawada will handle the damage. Hurry up and come now. Or face my wrath. She cut the phone. They'll be here soon. Yuki said with a bitter face. Pin her down, Dr. Minaka yelled. I used my weight to hold Sine's right arm down. Kohai and Mayoi were holding on to Sine's le left arm and leg, but it was difficult to do when she was thrashing about. Ow, it hurts, it hurts! She clawed out the air and twisted, spraying the area with blood. Kohai was closest to the wounds, getting most of it. He kept blinking to avoid getting blood in his eye. Make her drink! Ow opened a bottle of vodka and pushed it into Sine's mouth. We could hear a dark crack as Sine bit down. Maybe her tooth had chipped, but Ow held the bottle firmly. It was important to see her senses numb. 
place stank of alcohol and, and the smell of vomit. Mizuho, Sakura, Sakura, and Miyori couldn't stand the scene and had to stay out. This is the last of it. Dr. Monaco opened a spray can and shot the contents of it onto Sane's wounds. In an instant, Sane's limbs went limp and fell onto the tables we were using as a make makeshift surgical table. Sane! The anesthetic worked. Don't wake her, she needs to conserve her energy. Dr. Monaco straightened herself. She had been hunched over in the wound for a hunched over the wound for a long time and her arms and legs were hands and arms and legs and literally everything were covered in blood. Is she safe? Yes, for once my OA's invention was actually useful. It was from an emergency kit I made in case I had some accident during my experiments. I already let the comments slide. Damn. We're all panting hard. Keeping her down was hard work. Kohai never took his eyes off Sine's wound. He could see her bones. The table was slippery with blood. Will she be alright? I asked and said. She'll live. Sine? Oh, thank goodness. Yumi dropped to her knees. She stroked Sine's teeth with teary eyes. She stroked Sine's cheek, not teeth, with teary eyes. We will be able to sew her leg back on. However, eh, her nerves have been bitten off. You mean... Manaka frowned and hesitated before she spoke. She'll never be able to use her right leg again. There, she said it. This is my fault. If it makes you feel better to believe so, then go ahead and believe it. If I'd stopped the fight between Sane and Mayori, this wouldn't have happened at all. Perhaps so, but don't cry over spilled milk. Now we have to think about how to deal with it. Wait. Yumi stood up. She looked drained and yet strong when she gave Dr. Monaka a firm look. The shop. Sane was supposed to inherit the shop. It was her dream to run it. It will depend on her rehabilitation. She won't be able to wait on the tables. It'll be hard with just one leg. She may recover enough to stand in the kitchen and cook, however. This is my fault. This is your fault, Yumi said in a hoarse voice. The hatred in it caused Kohai to back away. This is all because you betrayed her. Never wanted this to hap- Get out! It was useless to talk. Kohai simply looked around and left. He looked so small when he did so. Not just him, all of you. Get out. Dr. Monaka said as she finished the, rough, the rest of the vodka. From here on, it's just the grown-up's job. You kids go home and rest. The test. Alright. That, that was short. Both those chapters were short. I'm going to keep going. Yuki and I left Sane, careful not to look to tread on the blood stain to snow. Meeting up with the others outside, we moved as a group just in case there were, there were... We moved as a group just in case there were other wolves. One by one, we separated into different homes. It's just the two of us now. Yeah. This is probably the first conversation we had had ever since we went to Sane. What is all this? I don't know. It's a lie, I heard, myself, I heard a voice in my head say. The child and I could be dead by now if things had played out as planned. I don't think she ever planned it. She, could have, she couldn't have stopped it even if she wanted to. She said she wanted me dead herself. I think she felt like it, but she couldn't decide whether she would do it or not. The final decision wasn't made by her. You're siding with her. You can get angry with me if you want. Why is this happening? I don't know. Another lie. I knew it was my fault. I believe the card and facts didn't matter. It was all an accumulation of the thoughts and decisions of the past. Everything connected to the result. I need to experiment. Did you say something? I hesitated. Let's hurry home. I decided it would. I would leave it for later. You're right. This is best for the child. She placed her hand on her stomach and smiled wanly. I had a feeling she would be here. You! Sine. How is Sine? When we returned to our room, the god of Tagami was there waiting for us. Sine's right leg will never work again, Yuki said clearly. It was enough to crush Shiro with guilt. Do you hate me so? I... I... I knew you were a mess, but to think that you would mistakenly attack Sine, how much worse can you get? It doesn't matter if you're a human or a god, you've done enough to all of us. Let me make amends, I'm a god, I can fix her. I can change things back. You know, th you know you're out of control. You couldn't even control your own wolves, let alone the weather. And you say you can make miracles in the state you are in? I... May not now, but when I when I can, I'll... Let's say you manage to help Sine. Can you guarantee you won't call something similar again? You still hate me. Uh... I have no hope in a god that can't protect the land we stand on, let alone the people that live in it. All the strength left Shiro's eyes. Yuki denouncing a god. A hopeless situation. Shiro completely defeated. All of this... It was because of me. Let's all fix this. They both called my name. 
watching me cautiously. I nodded. It would take on it would only take a phrase. That was all. Would it be right? I wouldn't know. I was still hesitant, but I tried to forget it all. I had to do this. The solution is simple. I would I said to both of them with a smile. How about an abortion? I asked with a tilt to my head. That's uh quite a statement. Everything happened because of the child. Yuki, you wished for it. Shiro, you went along with it. And I put off making a decision even for for so long even Kohai got influenced. So it's better to, remo to remove the problem and prevent any further damage. I had to experiment. And what if I... Isn't it a little late for that? It took me a while to put two and two together, but isn't it a little late for that? And what if I agreed to the abortion, Misaki? And I'll stay with you, Shiro, if you make the move first. Because there wouldn't be any complications. Of course I would choose to be with you. Really? Really? You'll stay with me if I do that? I promise. Only if you do it before Yuki does, though. I turn to Yuki. So, my head snapped sideways. Are you serious? It took a few seconds to realize she had slapped me. That hurt! I placed my hand on my cheek. The sting wasn't as bad as, as, as the heat that emitted from it. You're putting other blame on an innocent child that hasn't even been born yet. If you hadn't wished for it, Yuki, none of this would have happened. Sine wouldn't have been hurt. Shira wouldn't be so unstable. Everyone wouldn't be... Everyone wouldn't be so awkward. It's all because of the pregnancy. I had forgotten, Yuki said as she frowned at me. She frowned down on her hand that had just hit me. I had forgotten that I have a choice to leave you. She then turned to Shiro and clutched her shoulder. Let's go. Where to? I don't have a place to go to. We have children to take, fa to take care of. The father has abandoned us. I see. It's all over. Shira's expression of fear melted down to nothing. We can be mothers to our children. We can only be mothers to our children. Misaki, do you have anything else to say? Goodbye. Stop smiling. My tooth broke. When I opened my mouth, the chipped tooth rolled onto my palm. Be thankful you're still alive. You don't deserve to stand before me. You should crawl. You tried to discard us. Your voice was soft, but it burned into my soul. Yuki was strong. I don't know how much it cost her to stay in control. Yeah? Stop smiling. Am I smiling? The harvest is ours and ours only. This is all we have. This is all we're going to hang on to. This is what we're going to hang on to. The two mothers turned to leave. My arms were heavy. So heavy they couldn't reach out to pull them back. I watched them walk away, their footsteps fading, till I couldn't see them anymore. Epilogue already? I seem to. I know I took a summer long break in October, but I seem to remember October being way longer than this uh, chapter has been. Hey. Um, anyway, I'm going to end this off here, so for now, my name is Dragonite, I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later.